Page 179. Nauseous at the idea that I could just walk away from everything that was happening to Rashad, everything that was happening to Paul, everything that was happening to everyone at school, everything that was happening to me too. I could just walk away from it all like a ghost. What kind of person did that make me if I did? Those were Ma's words. And when I got home, I found myself for the first time in a long time, also admitting that I wish she was home and not working. Of course, that made me feel like a goddamn kid, so I made myself feel like I was worth something by helping Willie with his homework. He was glad for it, but probably not as much as I was that he needed me and I could actually help him figure out his fractions. Later, though, my mind drifted back to Rashad, and I totally blew dinner. It should have been simple. I'd made mac and cheese with tuna, peas, and hot sauce more than times than I could count, but I overcooked the pasta, and there was way too much hot sauce. Willie fanned his mouth after the first bite. Ah, he said. Are you trying to kill me? I improvised by shredding some extra cheddar cheese into our bowls, and guiltily, I felt glad that he had his headphones on. Though Ma would have killed him for that stunt at the dinner table, because my thoughts would not let up. Now, I was thinking about how, if I wanted to, I could walk away and not think about Rashad, in a way that English or Shannon or Toombs or any of the guys at school who were not white could not. Even if they didn't know Rashad, even if for some reason they hated Rashad, they couldn't just ignore what happened to him. They couldn't walk away. And they were probably afraid too. Afraid of people like Paul, afraid of cops in general. Hell, they were probably afraid of people like me. I didn't blame them. I'd be afraid too, even if I was a friggin' house like Tombs. But I didn't have to be because my shield was that I was white. It didn't matter that I knew Paul. I could be all the way across the country in California and I'd still be white. Cops and everyone else would still see me as just a regular kid, an all-American boy. Regular. All-American. White. Fuck. But then after dinner, as I was helping Willie with the last of his math homework, I realized something worse. It wasn't only that I could walk away. I already had walked away. Well, I was sick of it. I was sick of being a dick. Not watching the damn video was walking away too, and I needed to watch it. I borrowed Willie's headphones, plugged them into my phone, loaded up YouTube, and I watched it right there at the kitchen table. It was the shaky video taken from across the street at Jerry's, and it was immediately back to Friday night, watching it happen all over again. There were two other videos too. I watched Rashad's body twisting on the concrete sidewalk. The video was taken from too far away. I couldn't hear what he was saying. I couldn't hear Paul. I heard the noise of the street just as I'd heard it that night, and I felt a zip line of fear right into the pit of my stomach. On Friday, I'd been down the street watching, but there, at the Formica table, I had a front row seat. Close to Rashad and Paul, I could almost see myself hovering just beyond the frame of the shot. I texted Jill and told her how bizarre it was to see it. Tuesday, 9.43 p.m. from Jill. Finally, now everybody's seen it. We went back and forth a few times, and then I just got fed up. Tuesday, 9.55 p.m. to Jill. Hey, can you talk? Tuesday, 9.56 p.m. from Jill. What? Tuesday, 9.56 p.m. to Jill. No, I mean it. On the phone? Talk? Tuesday, 9.57 p.m. from Jill. Whatever. Tuesday, 9.57 p.m. to Jill. Like, I need to talk. She buzzed a second later, and I got up, slid the headphones across the table to Willie, and left the kitchen. We said our hellos and all that as I walked into the living room. I feel so gross, I said. I keep telling myself it isn't my problem, but it is. It is my problem. I just don't know what to do. Yeah, but it isn't your only your problem. It's everyone's problem. But I still don't know what to do. Like, tell the police? She paused, and I heard her breathe. Maybe. Jesus. Telling the police meant telling Paul's friends. Meant Paul's friends telling him what I was doing. But everyone's seen it, Quinn. It's all our problem. But what is that problem? Then it was my turn to be quiet, and I shuffled over to the couch and sat down. What is it? Her voice rose. Excessive violence? I don't know. Unnecessary beating? Uh, shit. Police brutality? Yeah. And, you know, the way it's all working out, it's more. Like who is sitting where at lunch? I looked at the carpet between my feet. Yeah. And whose lockers they looked in first for spray paint cans? Yeah. Shit, really? That happened? That's what I saw. Three black students, boys, in a row. Then Martinez. They skipped me. 
Fuck. I let the air in my cheeks fill and then slowly blow out. So yeah, like all that. Like Paul's white and Rashad's black. I just sat there, staring at the door to the kitchen like a dumbass zombie trying to find some words. Paul says he did what he did because he was protecting some white lady in the store, Jill added. What? Yeah, that's what my mom says, but uh, really? Seriously. You think it would have been the same if the lady wasn't white or if Rashad wasn't black? Seriously. Seriously what? Why is it taking me five minutes to say the word racism? Maybe you're racist. Don't joke. This is serious. I'm not. I'm not racist. She hesitated, and I sat there, stinking in my own sweat, needing her to say something. Eventually, she did. Not like the KKK racist, she said. I don't think most people think they're racist. But every time something like this happens, you could, like you said, say not my problem. You could say it's a one-time thing every time it happened. I wanted to say something, but it was like my head just pounded and every word that came to mind just shook and fell back into my throat. I think it's all racism, Jill said for me. And if I don't do something, I finally mustered. If I just stay silent, it's just like saying it's not my problem. Mr. Fisher spent our whole history class talking about it. If anyone wanted to talk about it more after school, he would. Me and Tiffany talked about it all day, so we went. There were a bunch of us there, and Fisher's helping us figure out what to do. I wish I could have gone, but I had basketball. But I have to do something. Let's see what other people are doing tomorrow. We said our goodbyes, and I sat there on the couch, staring into the kitchen looking at Willie. His head bent down so close to the paper he was scribbling his answers on, the red headphones like beacons on either side of his head. It was like he was buried deep within his own little world. I felt like I'd been doing the same damn thing the last couple days trying so hard to stare so hard at my own two feet that I wouldn't have to look up and see what was really going on. And while I'd been doing that, I'd been walking in the wrong direction. I didn't want to walk away anymore.